Good morning guys and welcome to Hither Green Tea MD in Oakage uh, and so we are going to continue with the weathering of the band body today um, so we'll see that little project finished off was going to do it yesterday but uh, I have done a little job down here which I'm about to show you okay guys so what I did yesterday was build this Ta -da! simple basic shelf unit to keep my controller safe as we know the ecosystem isn't exactly cheap and uh, it was at risk of getting damaged where it was just lying on the floor and uh, was at risk from being trampled on and things like that so bit the bullet built my shelf um, all I had to do was fit two droppers that screw onto the uh, joist on the underside of the baseboard here two cheap drawer runners which cost about six dollars from Bunnings a handle to match what was on the traverser and the rest is all off cuts of wood from the traverser construction the plywood and these front and rear I'll put one of these boards on the back as well to stop the controller falling off the back and that's it dead simple protects the controller worth every penny so with that little job ticked off the list it was one that was there waiting to be done in the background we shall now get on with the wagon body weathering and we'll finish that little project off now I'll take you off to the workbench and here we are so the wagon body as was done and completed on the previous salt weathering video and that is to the where we got it so today we're going to pick out some bit of detail and add little patches of rust. Um, so I went and bought some fresh paint from my local model shop, some Humbrol acrylics. Um, I've got three browns, I've got a number 160, a 70 and a 113. So that's what I'm going to be using today and we're just going to go through and put some little patchy bits on okay so first of all what I'm going to do is apply some rusty bits on the metal on the ends and for that I'm not going to actually use a brush because I just want to gently dab it on the top of the ribs on the end here and what I'm going to use for that I've just got an old bit of tissue paper scrunched up and then I'm going to just dip it in the paint, dab it off and just gently blotch it over. So first off we're going to use the number 70. I don't know how long it's been in the shop for. So first things first. Yeah, it definitely needs a really good, it's a solid mess in the bottom. It seems to be blue. Why is it blue? No, it's turning brown. Yeah, it's turning brown quite quickly. Obviously the solution that this is carried in is blue. I thought for a minute they got the wrong lid on. Yep, yeah, it's stirring up quite quickly. It's mixing nicely. And good to go. I can feel that the, the lumps in the bottom are disappearing. Right, so we'll just scrape them into there. And using my tissue paper, on a nice crinkled side, let's grab a bit of paint, dab it off on there because I don't want too much of it. And then get it so we can do sort of a couple of dabs down the corner there and just don't need a lot just blotch it on and you can probably see that that's come out a lot clearer what I might do is I'll get a bit more light around here so you can see even better okay so having repositioned the light 
and made it a bit better so we can see here let's grab a bit more paint on the tissue scrunch it back up again we just want sort of a random effect well here in the house and just a couple of dabs here and there and down the corners Try to keep it just on, on the metal work. This is the first first bit. We're not going mad with this tissue or all the colours. And you can just see it gives sort of a, a chipped rust effect. And then we can try it with our lighter colour as well. So I'm just going to have to open this jar up and give this one a stir. As you can see, it's quite blue. So. Uh, We'll give it a good stir. Wait for the pigment to come up from the bottom. <coughs> and that again is a nice rusty colour. Obviously some parts rust quicker than others and darken down earlier and then as time goes on the different shades come through as pa paint peels off. So again we'll do a little bit of scrunched up tissue put a little bit of paint on the, on the paper get off the excess because we don't want too much and just dab it on in a couple of little different places so you can just see it picks up a few and what I'm going to do is dab along the rail on the roof of spots on there and on this corner and on this end don't need it on too heavy it's just a couple of little spots so I hope you can see those there. But what I'll do at the end is I'll stick some photographs on of various angles, hopefully taken outside, so we can see it a bit better. All right, so now what I need is one of my very fine, tiny, well, put that back on the brush, my very fine paint brushes. Because what I'm now going to do is highlight some of the light rust, some of the metal fittings. So we've got this latch on here. I'm going to just paint a bit of rust on that. And on this one. And also on this side. So that helps to make them start to stand out from just the panel work behind. What I've noticed is we've got some little bolts coming through so we'll just pick out a few of those bolts in the timber on this end. And what we can also do is when there's not too much paint on the brush just very light streak down and just makes a little rusty streak underneath effectively dry brushing but on top again there so we'll just take the paint off to make sure there's not too much on just wipe it off on the tissue and we just pick a bolt and go that one there and that looks quite good and there's a metal bit here so we'll just put very little paint on the brush maybe a little streak down under there and that's it just tiny potentially less is more and we've got the join here and we'll just put a bit underneath just there we'll do a little bit on this side streak it down a little bit just to show it 
just dab a little bit on the edge because the edges of metal gets knocked and scratched and then the paint breaks away and things happen Let's come this through I'm also going to use because we're on the lightest color just a little bit on the top and the bottom of the hinges where the hinge rotates see it's not a lot of paint but hopefully you'll see later on in the photos that not a lot of paint is just enough just to make things stand out a bit it's all random it's just splattered it around sort of thing. dry brush not too much here on the door so we'll just put it on and wipe it off so that loses some of the intensity of the colour on bits <coughs> you get too much on like that put it spot on just wipe it in the downward direction that's naturally where it would flow and uh, Weathering is easy because less is more. You don't want to go too mad. Well, you can go as mad as you like, but quite often things weather they weather slowly over time, and rust builds up slowly over time. You don't have great sheets of rust and things, but paint chips, and sometimes you know, it can be overdone. So. You can always add to it easier than you can remove it so like on the chalkboard here these are just thin metal brackets so they'll rust quicker than the thick heavy steel and become more damaged quicker <clears throat> so that's one side as you can see it's just a few little highlights just to break it up a bit and we'll do the same on this side. So again, we'll pick out things like the door hinges here. We're going to add a bit more on because we've got two other colours here. So where things get knocked and damaged. You don't need to put great big blobs on. Paint on, so we'll just take some of it off just to tone it down. And there we go, so we just highlight a few bits. So, again, we'll just put a little bit under another joint, streak it down. So if I put a blob of paint there, you can see it's a blob, hopefully, and then you just wipe it down. And it sort of sits there more naturally underneath and uh, smeared. So again, we're just going to highlight, highlight some of these bolts at the bottom that are sticking through the plywood, just so you can see them. much paint just wipe stroke it downwards because naturally that's where it would go and it leaves just a shadow of where it was painted on so 
We're getting there with this colour. Splodge on and a wipe off. And of course, the green also adds a bit of uh, age to it. Apart from being an olive green paint that's faded over time, it could also be a bit of moss and other bits that are just. So, again, I'll try and do it so you can see, hopefully. So we've got a blob under that bolt in there, and there, and we'll just drag it down the side so you get like a straining as it goes down. as much as, or as little as you like but I always start off small and go yeah I'm happy with that I'm happy with that, with that colour and we'll have a look on the ends so again we've got a bit of the framework that holds on the chalkboard on the end we've got a bit on the lamp bracket, a rusty streak under the lamp bracket and again up on the top we've got some more bolts up there and just put a bit of paint on those and wipe it downwards and the same with these ones here, you've got a little bit there and where you've got a bolt sticking through you can tend to get over time a little bit of movement and what happens is then you get a crack in the paint and then the rust builds up behind and pops out from the I don't know if you'll be able to see again, I'm going to put a little spot of paint there and wipe down and just puts a little streak and put it as big, make it bigger and again a couple of strokes down and it blends it so that's that end This end's getting quite colourful with several different rusty tones on it. And just add a few underneath here. Rusty down there a bit. Just tuck a bit under the seam. bracket and not there. There, okay so what I'm now going to do is put the lid back on this colour because I reckon that colour is done. to the number 70, the colour we started with. Again we're just going to continue, we're just going to touch in again where just different ones on top of where we were before so you get a bit of variation and put a different colour brown streak under this one there and smear that down. And we'll put some up here under the top. As well, rusty patch end. Put 
it on and wipe it off. But what I'm not doing is putting it on the wood. There's a rusty patch sort of here because it, there's no bolts there or anything like that. So we're just going around. Just putting a bit on the metal framework, the door latch and the door bar, just to make it stand out a bit. Put it on and dab it down. Like I say, weathering is easy. There's no exact science with it. But the weather naturally drags down, so wherever you put a spot of paint, if you've got too much on, just drag it down. and. Uh, Disperse it a bit. Oh, yes. What you can do on the bottom board here is we may rush it underneath and put just a little streak down there. And just rub it till you're happy where the water might have run. that side. It's just about toning, different tones, different colours, rust is different colour depending on how old it is. A rusty patch. Could have been on this part for years and you got another fresh bright orange piece that's only just started to come through. So right, last side on this one. So again, I'm just going to highlight a couple of these bolts, drag it down with a very fine tip. Highlight some more of the bar here. It gets knocked and rattled around. Last pair of the pin and the bump stop there. Hinges, more rust on the hinges because they're metal. Very little paint, doesn't take much because you just keep rubbing it on and you just come back with another spot on applying specific areas. easy to work. Put it on, smear it out. finger because it was just slightly too heavy on the top there. We'll see how that dries out. That, that looks pretty good I think. And just put another spot here I reckon. Draw it down and swipe it away. And just randomly very end of the brush, Let's put some more rusty bits on the frame. I don't know how it looks on the camera, but uh, I'm happy with how it's coming out. 
in my eyesight anyway. But let's see, hopefully it'll get it, take it outside and get some decent sunlight on it. And we get a couple of decent photos, you'll be able to see. So I reckon that'll do with that colour and we'll just go once over with some of this very dark brown, number 160. And again we've got to stir it up because all the pigment has settled at the bottom. For a little while I was thinking it was almost black but it's finally picked out the colour. So again we've got another dark chocolatey brown. Okay, all we're going to do is randomly put some spots a bit on some more metal work. So again, it's just another shade doing exactly the same. spots here and there even where you've already been with the brush previously you can just shade over the top with other brown that we have put on just an occasional little so it's all random just equal to equal to just Spot here, spot there. None of it's right. If you're not happy, just rub it, make it natural, just a little smear downwards. And I reckon. Exact science, just a little bit here, a little bit there. Blend it in. I reckon and that is going to be suitable for the browns. Now we're going to go on to good old number 33 matte black. what I'm going to paint black is this is mainly going to be dry brushed so I need absolute minimum amount of paint on Just minimum and wipe it off 
And where I've got the old chalkboards, dry brushing. Again, I don't want perfect, I just want to highlight it. Same on the end ones, not perfect. Paint it in the downward direction. Wipe off where I don't want paint to be. Because it's just, it's old, it hasn't been painted for years, the black paint has faded, it's rubbed off. It's just to highlight the detail there. It used to be black. Okay, so that is that. What I'm also going to do is the absolute minimum. I still obviously need some on. I'm going to draw along just the corner of the bottom and shade upwards slightly onto the wooden boards. You can see. Just to highlight the bottom. Dirt has stuck on, a bit of rot in the wood, and just a bit of shading at the bottom here. I'm happy with that. What do you reckon? So that leaves me with the lamp brackets and the roof. Now we're going lighter colours here again. So I'm going to just grab some water, clean the brushes, and swap the tins of paint over. Back in a second. Okay, for this next part, we're using Humboldt enamels because I've only got enamels in these colours. Is Matt 34 white. And I've gone for a lightish grey, which is satin 165. Um, all we're going to be painting now is with the white, a tiniest amount of paint. We're going to waste more than we're going to use on the tips of the lamp brackets where they were painted white previously. Um, and the grey to weather down the roof, which I've painted grey previously with the airbrush. Um, that's an even coat. We just want to lose the evenness out of it. So, first off, white. It's going to be hardly worth stirring it. So we're just going to nick a piece off the top of the lid because that's slight. That's white. It's got a bit of pigment. And we want as minimum amount of paint as possible on the brush. And just because it used to be white, it's not white anymore. So you can put a bit on, dab a bit off, put a bit more on. So it used to be white. And that's it. All the effort, I'm going to have to clean the brush and everything else and use thinners to clean it purely just for. I suppose I could have used something else to apply it. But it's just a hint of white. Just a 
but we don't want it even so it's wider in places than others and that'll do that's the white and the grey um, what we're going to do here we're going to have to stir this one up so I'll just grab a stirrer I bet I haven't got one here on the bench back in a second all these free coffee stirrers so all come in handy so gently just mix it Again, this is going to be a dry brushing so we're not putting much paint on the brush and then we're going to try and remove as much of the brush as possible because all we're just doing is toning down the grey that is on the roof stirrer first literally white everything off now that I've splattered it over the roof <laughs> and literally it's just a dusting random brushing backwards and forwards with very minimal paint on the bristles again you can rub it in but I think you can see what we're achieving here. Which is why you don't want too much paint on, otherwise you end up just painting the roof. Now what we don't want to be doing is painting the roof. Just letting streaky. Not so easy to blend it with the finger, being enamels, but uh, bit of paint there. Get off as much as practical off the brush. And we'll start working up in this corner. variation to the roof because it's not been anywhere for a while and it just sits there getting weathered and as simple as that. So again, yep. Not too much paint on the brush. You've got to try and get all off and just use effectively just a dirty brush. Just to add. Streaking. And again, it's just going to run off to the end, so you, want, you don't want to be brushing that way. You're brushing sideways. And that, I am happy with that, and that is where I'm going to leave it. I might actually just put a little bit of grey. Absolutely minimum bit of grey. 
wipe off. So just highlight some of the bits of the body. Should have done sideways, but there's not enough on here to show it up, so we're all right. Just a little bit. Because the grey gives more fading effect. Just adds another variation in tone of the green on the bodywork. Highlights. Adds a couple of little highlights. I say, none of this is exact science, it's just a random covering. And there we are, I'm going to call that it. And I'm going to go and take this outside and do some photos and uh, hopefully it will show it up nicely for you to see clearer than you can on this camera in this light. There we go. So I'll be back in a second with my phone camera in this case and uh, we'll see what we can grab. <laughs> 